Hello everyone, welcome back to some of the wonderful CLPPD Canva videos. If this is going to be your first time using Canva, I recommend going back to our YouTube page. There's going to be another video there that's a little more introductory with a few more of the basics. This was going to go over some techniques that even if you've used Canva a little bit, you might still not be aware of, and that can really make a huge difference in your design process. Mainly the things we're going to be going over are templates, filters, text effects, graphics, grouping and ungrouping. So let's get started. So for the context of this video, I'm going to act as if I'm designing a poster for a new club at my library, the Environmental Club. This is actually a new club, but they are designing their own poster, so we are not going to do that. Should not have included the. So what you'll find when you're searching templates on Canva is that the simpler terms you use, the better. So when I search Environmental Club, you don't get that many results. There's mostly resumes, a couple of flyers, but not really that many results. And honestly, most of them look, because most of them are resumes, fairly old, which because I'm advertising this club for, you know, elementary through middle aged, uh, middle school aged kids, I don't want it to look so professional. I want it to look a little more informal, a little more inviting. So using looser terminology, more broad terms, tends to give you better results. So I'm going to use outdoor club. Even though that isn't exactly what an environmental club is, all we're looking for is a good place to start. So for example, luckily since we are using the CLPVD account, we have that pro membership. And this bike club looks like a great place to start. A lot of it I'll be changing, a lot of it Realistically, most of it will not stay the same, but it is a great starting point. Especially the huge benefit of using a template is just it feels so much easier to get started when you're not just looking at a blank screen. So I'm going to skip this tour. The first thing I want to do is get rid of that lovely image of someone riding a bike. While it's a great photo, it's not really relevant to what I'm using this poster for. So this is actually an image in a frame, which is a really cool feature that I could talk about in a minute, but we just want to get rid of the image, but keep the frame. So you select detach image, which pulls it out of there. You can see what the full image looks like, and then you can delete it. If you just click delete, you then get rid of that whole frame, which if that's what you're trying to do, that's totally fine. But for many people, if you would like to keep the frame, it's just a matter of detaching that image and deleting it. And now we can swap in our own images easily. So if I had an image, for example, of the kids who are already particip participating in the environmental club doing something outdoors, I could pop that right in that frame. For now, I don't have anything in mind, so I'm just going to leave it blank for now. I'm also going to get rid of this little bike while it's very cute. Again, not relevant. This text, I am going to edit, but I think it's a great example to talk about circular text. So this text has an effect applied to it which when you click on text, when you have it highlighted blue like this, you can see in this top corner here, right next to animate, you have effects. And that's where you can find different styles and effects to apply to your text. So you can give it shadows, you can lift it, hollow it out, make it neon and glow. You can give it a background, which is really useful if you have a very busy poster with lots of images perhaps. But in this case, what they've done is they've curved it. And that curve is pretty steep, so we click out of the text so we're not editing the text but still have it selected. Um, when we're on this effect you can see this curve option down here is what affects how curved it is. So I'm going to remember that this is at 79 because I do like that preset and I would like to set it back to that. But if you curve it, pull it this way, it curves it more to the point where it's overlapping on itself. If you pull it back towards the middle, there's no curve. And if you pull it this way, it curves it the other way. And we're gonna bring it back to that 79, which I liked. Uh, no. I, you can also just type it in, which is often easier than just trying to scroll to it. But I do wanna edit that text, because I like that little emblem, but we're just gonna make it say, I'm gonna use a star instead of um, a dot. We're gonna delete it, and we're gonna have it say, Oh no. So we are just going to type, oh, if I select in that text box that is, 
Well, this is where it might be useful to zoom in a little bit so I can actually see the text box I'm, text box I am looking at. We're just going to type, I want to give it a little space, environmental club. And we can see in the background what that looks like. So that gives us a, a good view of the scale. So we can see we don't really have room to type environmental club multiple times. Like before, this had bike club over and over again. But there isn't really room for environmental club to be written more than a few times, like realistically more than once. We could make the text a lot smaller, we could always change the font, or we could just have this say something else. Like maybe we could have it say the time and day. Maybe we could have it say Wands Cook Library. Something like that. For now, I'm going to leave it as Environmental Club, but it's definitely something to consider that unlike Bike Club, Environmental Club is a little bit too long to really fit in that kind of overlapping way that Bike Club did, which looked really nice. Over here, we are going to change the title to just say Wanscock Library. I do like, not Wanscock Library, Environmental Club. I do like this font. If you do not, uh, like the font, again, that is over in text, which up here, it's right here. We don't want it that big. We would probably like it. I'm going to test out 32. It's a little small. Let's try 48. It's about the size of what it was before. Maybe a little bit smaller, but I think it looks nice. And then we are going to slide this text box to fit the actual text itself. This is not something you always have to do, but it can make a difference when you're trying to order and reorder things on the poster. Having a really long or really broad text box, even if your text is only fairly small, can make it really difficult when you're rearranging things because you might constantly be accidentally clicking into that text box, which is just a hassle to deal with. The next thing I want to show is some of the filters. We've talked a lot about templates, editing. Now let's get into some of the filters. So elements over here. I want to find something nice to put in that background that fits with the theme. So I'm going to put nature, but obviously that is going to have a lot of options. So for this, I want something to go in this photo frame. So rather than a graphic, which I might fit on the side, obviously no video or audio because this is going to be a printable poster. I'm going to click into these photos and then up here, this little button opens up the filters. So we can see all the different things you can sort it by. I would like something vertical to fit in this frame well. I want something static because it's going to be printable. So I don't really want something animated. Cutouts means there is a transparent background, so you can easily pop it onto posters. Price, free or pro. This doesn't really matter for us because we have these pro accounts, but it can make a difference if you're working at home or something like that. And then up here, we're going to look at the colors. I want something nice and bright green. I am thinking of using green in the background color of the poster, but for now I think green looks really nice. So let's apply these filters and see what we've got. So we have a lot of leaves, a lot of grass, which are all very nice, but none of them are quite what I'm looking for. But this one I think looks really nice. So we pop it over here, and I like how it looks. As you can see, it automatically snaps to fit in that um, frame, which is really nice. And what we can do if we decide later, we don't want that, we can detach that image. But here's what I want to talk about. These uh, images, this photo, already Canva has scanned it and seen what kind of colors it has. It has the pinks, it has the greens. So what you can do, I want this page to match. So I'm going to click right here. Oops, I don't know. I did not mean to drag that there. So I'm going to click right here and I'm going to say apply colors to page. So I'm going to mess with these because I don't love how the green matches with the picture, but that already has changed the template to automatically match with that photo, which I really like and I think looks a lot nicer. So now we can take this background and I want to make sure it's actually the background and not the lovely frame. And I want to change it to some of these other photo colors. So you can see here it has all the other photo colors. So it has that little bit of blue, it has the green, so it's obviously prioritized what appears the most. Let's try the pink. So we do have the border selected, but that's okay because I think that pink looks really nice on the border. And then we want just the background. 
which I might have to zoom in a little bit so I can make sure I can select the background and not another element. So we're going to select right here. Oh, it is still the border. One second. Okay, so the issue is the border, as you can see by the edges, is rough, is bigger than the actual image. So just for momentary sake, so I can access that background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that border and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller just so that I can actually click on the background. And now I'm going to change that background to that nice dark green that I think looks really nice. And then I'll take this border and I will pop it right back to where it was before. I want to make sure it matches up so that all those sides match up and it looks really nice. When we zoom back out, I think that looks a lot nicer. Now I will want to mess with the text a little bit, but just using that, those filters to find a nice image, applying those colors directly to the poster means it's already much more cohesive and already much more applicable to what we're doing as an environmental club rather than a bike club. So next, one last thing I want to touch on very quickly is I want to touch on grouping and ungrouping. Grouping and ungrouping can make a massive difference in the design process. I use grouping and ungrouping almost constantly and it makes a massive difference in my design process. What grouping and ungrouping essentially does is it takes two or more disparate elements and it links them together so that when you move one, it moves the other with it, which makes it super easy. So for example here, let's say I have this text box and this text box as well as the little box underneath. I want those all to stay in that exact same position to each other so that no matter where, if I move this amount of text up, this moves with it as well as the box behind. I want all of that to stay together. When you have all of them selected, you right click to grab our little menu and you see this one that just says group. So we group those together and now when they're grouped, I move this up, the other moves with it. And it makes it super simple to make sure that all of the elements that you want to stay, stay together, even as you're rearranging your posters. And if you decide you actually don't want them all to stay together, like you want one or more to be moved up higher, or maybe you want them to be vertical instead of horizontally aligned, it's really easy. You just right click, you say ungroup. Now we'll still have them all selected at first, so you have to click out of it. And then, whoops, I don't want to move that flower. When you click back, now it's just the one, and I can just move this freely. One last element I would love to discuss is graphics. Graphics, I think, make a huge difference and are a really important piece of using Canva. So graphics over here, for example, we already have nature selected. We can see all these lovely nature graphics. A lot of graphics are fairly simple. They look a lot like clip art, but a lot of them are customizable and you can change them to fit the needs of your poster. So for example, these lovely leaves, I believe, yes. So when you pop them, they pop right in. I can stick this in the top corner, make it smaller. But maybe let's say I don't love that color. I just, I have too much of that green, even though I don't actually have it anywhere on my poster. I can select color and I can change it to fit the rest of the poster. And this is really relevant when you are using, when you want to have people on your poster and you want to make sure that you're representing various groups of people. Um, there's a lot of graphics on Canva that do have various people and you can edit their skin tones, you can edit their hair color, things like that to better fit the people you want to represent in your po uh, posters. I, for this example, I'm going to use one that I just used for a different poster for a Mother's Day graphic for some signage in my children's area. So I just searched Mother's Day. You get all these lovely, I knew I wanted to use graphics. This one right here is the one I used. And as you can see, when you do edit image, it is not showing up now. One second. I apologize if it's not this graphic, it's a different graphic that I was thinking of. When you just search mothers. So this does not apply to every graphic. There are only some that have this feature, but it can be a little tricky to find because they don't have a preset filter but you can just click around. Generally, it's ones with more simple color palettes, like something like this is going to be a little too involved. It's more than likely not going to be something you can edit all of the colors involved, but it might be, but you can find out just by clicking and adding it. So for example, this one is the one I was thinking of. Then when you click it, it adds it, and you can see every element of the image is a color I can change. So if I wanted to make 
all of their hair, let's say just a dark brown instead. It does also change one of their shirts, which is sometimes something to be aware of. Sometimes graphics like this, when you change one color, there's another color in it that also has that same color. And you don't always notice until you've done it, but um, it's just something to be aware of. So I'm gonna actually make it a darker brown. Or if I want, these all have all three have a separate skin tone, but you should also note that this last one who has the bright red face, it is also the red of this mother's shirt. So it is something to keep in mind, but you can change it so that it's the same as the other mother, which does give a little bit of an effect because this woman is the same color as her sweater now. Um, you could make it that dark brown, same as the hair. You could make it um, a kind of tan, whatever color you'd want. It can be a little tricky playing around with this color wheel. Because it's fairly small on here, you just have that small limited view. One thing I recommend, you can find a lot of color palette sites that will give you this code that you can then enter, which is often a lot easier than just trying to slide around and find a specific color you're looking for. You can even look up uh, Natural Skin Tones color palette, and it'll give you these little codes that you can enter, and that's much easier than trying to scroll around and find the one you're looking for. But those graphics are awesome for editing things like that. Not all of them, again, will have that feature. Uh, if they don't, when you add it, oh, this one does. But uh, when you add it, it'll have the little color blocks up here, and that's how you know, one, that you can edit the colors, and two, um, that's where you will change those colors. So even though that's not an element I would use in this poster, it is super relevant and awesome to use. Uh, I will go back later and finish up this poster on my own, but I hope this has been helpful in some slightly more advanced techniques for using Canva and getting the most out of all of these services that we have, especially as a pro account, all of the different uh, graphics and elements that we have access to that make it super fast and super simple to make an awesome creative poster. Thanks so much.